should be uniform, systematic and similar. Now this actually does not happen. Let us introduce the things one by one. Like moon revolves around the earth. All over the earth we will have semi diurnal tides. Two sets of tides occurring in 24 hours 50 minutes. Now let us put a declination into the moon. We know that moon's orbit is inclined by about 5 and a quarter degrees to the ecliptic which means that moon's declination can go as high as 28 and 3 quarter north to 28 and 3 quarter south. Consider this as uh, equinoctial and about 23 and a half degrees to the equinoctial you have ecliptic and let us consider the possibility that moon is about five and a quarter degrees above which means that the moon's declination from the equinoctial is about 28 and 3 quarter degrees. Now because of the moon the bulge that is caused or the high water that is caused is over here and low water is caused over here and once again on the other side the high water is caused over here and low water is caused 90 degrees away. Now this being equinoctial this becomes the axis of rotation and let us consider what happens to this person who is on this parallel of latitude right going around the earth with the spinning of earth now this person is experiencing one low water and one high water that means this person is experiencing because of the declination of the moon and the latitude of the person this person is experiencing a diurnal tide he is experiencing one high water and one low water. Let's come a little down and let's see what happens to this person. Now this person is experiencing one high water over here, one low water over here, one high water over and one low water on the other side which means that he is experiencing semi diurnal types but they are of unequal duration. Look at the duration from here to here and also look at the duration from here to here. Look at the height of tide over here and height of high water here. This high water is uh, much lower compared to this high water and this particular interval of tide is much less compared to this. So there is tidal inequality in time and height of tide. So this happens because of the combination combined effect of latitude and declination, declination of the moon of course and the latitude of the person. Now let us consider a person at equator, he is experiencing high water here, low water here, high water here and once again the low water on the other side. If you assume that the pile of water remains under the moon and there is another pile on the other side diametrically opposite point and if we assume that this pile has to move with the moon but remember under this magnificent expanse of water there is earth which is spinning which means that the mass of water that is on top of the earth must relatively move with respect to the earth at a speed of something like 900 miles per hour. For a wave to move around the globe at this speed that is 900 miles per hour, the depth which is required is more than 20 kilometers. But actually the average depth that is available is 3.9 kilometers. Which means uh, with everything else favorable this wave could move at maximum 700 kilometers per hour. Even if we understand that the body of water can move at 700 kilometers per hour, invariably what would happen is a wave which wants to move around the globe is deflected. It's prevented to move. It's stopped by the continents. And when the wave is stopped by the continents, in northern hemisphere what happens is because of the Coriolis effect, it gets deflected to the right in southern hemisphere it gets deflected to the left in the enclosed bodies say for example you may assume the enclosed body to be mediterranean and sometimes you may also consider that um, malacca strait is an enclosed body so assuming that malacca strait is the uh, enclosed body what happens there is a tidal pattern which is generated there to understand this tidal pattern let us assume that there is this transparent bucket of water, right? In this transparent bucket of water, I put some colored water and I move the water 
clockwise or anti-clockwise with my hand and what I see on the side of the bucket is a wave pattern. There is a wave pattern which is seen on the side of the bucket. But if I see the bucket from top, I will find that there is a kind of a wave height at the edges and in the middle of bucket there is calm. That calm in the middle of bucket is called amphidromic point and the system of tide whereby the tidal water is not allowed to move out of a so-called enclosed space goes round and round because of the stoppage by the continent and the land masses and the Coriolis effect. This particular system of tide is called amphidromic system. So if we see this system from top, then what happens? How does it look? This particular system when you see from top, let's say this is an enclosed body. Let us assume that this is Malacca Strait. And these are the port, you know, which are adjacent to the coast. And let us say the so-called amphidromic point is this. And round the amphidromic point you have concentric curves of different range of tides. Say for example, this is 1 meter range, 2 meter range, 3 meter range and the one which is passing through the port is of 4 meter range. So you see the concentric circles. So this information that is provided is called co-range information. Apart from this, you have the radial curves, right? And these radial curves are called cotidal. It might be say, for example, one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, five hours, six hours, and so on. By the way, you have passage planning guide for Malacca Strait available. It is one of the British Admiralty charts. Like uh, uh, you have this kind of chart also available for English channel. Now, let's say this is the co-range or co-tidal information this is the amphidromic point and we can see the radial lines representing co-tidal line and we have concentric lines which are representing the co-range lines now you have this port for which the information the tidal information is available from admiralty tide table and uh, your ship is over here you want to know what time you'll get high water what time uh, you will get low water, what are the ranges available for you, etc. Now let us say the prediction tells you that the high water is at uh, 1500 hours and it is 6.4 meters and low water is 21.20 and it is 1.4 meters. Now the range available for the port is 5 meters. And the high water timing is at 1500 hours. Now port is at 3 hours, I am at 1 hour. That means I should get the high water 2 hours before the port. So my high water should be not 1500 hours. The ship's high water should be 1300 hours. So to find out what time you will get the high water is very simple. The difference, the difference of co-tidal lines, the difference of co-tidal lines is 2 hours so I will get a uh, high water 2 hours before the port. Now talking about the range, the port is at 4 meter co-range line, I am at 2 meters co-range line. So the ratio is 1 is to 2, the ratio is 2 is to 4. So I can write like this, my range upon port range is equal to 2 upon 4. Now the port range as you can see is 5 meters, so my range should be 2 upon 4 multiplied by 5, right? That is 2.5 meters. So I will not get a 5 meter range because I am on 2 meters core range line, right? The ratio of port range to my range will be the ratio between the port's core range line and my core range line. So range or high water height is found by the ratio. Right? And time is found by the difference.